Rub up your engines! Here's why you gotta worry about buying used hybrid or electric cars. Guy in Florida bought a used Ford Focus for his son and he paid $11,000 for it. Then the car stopped working and he had it towed to a garage. And the guy says, well, I hate to tell you this, but the battery's gone bad and the repair bill for replacement is going to be $14,000. This is for a car that they only paid $11,000. This woman, her father, bought her the car for $11,000 and unfortunately, he recently passed away of colon cancer. So the grandfather said, oh, I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. So it's bad enough when grandpa goes and they said, oh, we're sorry, it's going to be $14,000. But then they say, well, we can't even fix it because they don't make these Ford Focus electrics anymore and this battery is not available. Can't even buy the battery. Ford discontinued the model and you can't even buy the battery if you wanted to. Now grandpa was a wise man. He said, well, it wouldn't have mattered. We weren't going to spend 14 grand fixing that stupid car anyways. They threw $11,000 down the toilet. Now if you went worldwide, I'm sure somewhere you could probably find a remanufactured battery or something like that. They don't work as well. They don't last as long. But the story is these hybrid and fully electric cars, the batteries cost a lot of money if you want to replace them with an original battery and buying a used one is often a stupid move because of this because it costs so much money to replace the batteries whatever you paid for that car you're going to eat it now on the other hand I have had customers buy used Toyota Prius this is the best hybrids out there sometimes they bought them for as little as $1,500 they had them for a few years then when the battery went out they just said eh. now nah, the Toyota one isn't 14 grand on a Prius but if you want to use the factory battery or you're still going to spend six, seven, eight thousand dollars. Toyotas make the best ones. If you want to gamble, get one dirt cheap. But for all logic, don't go out and buy one for eleven, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars, and then find out within a year you need a battery that costs fourteen grand. It's stupid to do that. You can get them cheap enough. You don't mind rolling the dice and gambling. Go right ahead. But don't pay like that guy did because now they spent 11 grand for a vehicle that's pretty much worthless. Randy Ramirez says, my co-worker that's 18 years old is an 06 Honda Civic with 270,000 miles. It runs like a clock. That's impressive to me over any supercar or any luxury car. Well, you know, that was Honda's original intent, a car for people to drive around it, just like the Volkswagen Beetle, the original Volkswagen, the people's wagon for getting around in, right? The Toyota Corolla was a basic transportation car. We had a customer back in a Lewiston garage when I was a kid, when I was 14. He drove one. I was amazed. The guy was like 6'4", and he came crawling out of this little thing. And I said, what? I've never seen a car like that. And they've come a long way. They can last. They can last. That's why they sell so many of them. They can just keep running. They're so well made. And now they're good looking. They're kind of ugly in the beginning, but I mean, they're pretty good looking cars now too. That's why they sell so many of them. And kids like them because they're zippier than the Toyotas. They're a little bit faster, got a little bit better suspension, and they can last just about as long. CCHL Butter Churners, that's a good one. Scotty, can I drive on ball joints sway bars to play safely? All right. Depends on how worn they are and how you're driving. Now, I had a customer with a Honda Civic and he had worn ball joints on it. You could jack it up and make it wobble. He drove it five years that way and nothing happened. Now, he drove in the city, mainly going 30, 35 miles an hour. If you really got a lot of play, it's not safe. If something could break off, then boom, off comes the wheel or something. If you got a little bit of play, a lot of times they can go quite some time. Look at your tires. If you see your tires are really wearing out unevenly, no, it's time to change the parts because it's so far off that the tires are sitting crooked and then they wear on one edge or the other or they get big scallops on the edge. The slower you drive, the safer you are. Now, on the other hand, if you do a lot of highway driving 70 80 miles an hour. No, change them right away. You don't want to lose a little bit of handling at high speeds, and then you'd want to fix it sooner than later. Mind in Motion says, before discovering your channel, I bought a Hyundai Tucson 2022 hybrid to transport film equipment. I'm religious about following all the scheduled maintenance and the manual. Should it be okay? Well, it should be okay. Just realize the Korean cars do not last like Toyotas and Hondas do. They just don't. But on the other hand, you know, I've had customers that had 110,000 miles and they never did anything but change the oil filter and they're still running okay. The only problem is you bought a hybrid. That is so much high tech. It costs a fortune to repair. Toyotas do too, but the Toyotas are better made. I can see a Hyundai hybrid. It'll break down 120, cost a fortune to fix. That same breakdown that would also cost a fortune fix on a Toyota Prius probably wouldn't happen until it had 250 or 300,000 miles, not 120,000 miles. So keep that 
in mind. Do the maintenance like you're supposed to and take care of it. You know, it could last quite some time. You bought it, so you would have been better off with a Toyota or a Honda, but you got it, so take care of it. Atlas says, hey, I'm ready to move my car from Florida to Tennessee. Anything should I do to protect my car against the changes? You really don't have to worry too much about anything other than make sure you got good antifreeze in the car. It gets a lot colder in Tennessee in the winter than it does in Florida. Now, it's not frigid or anything. It does get below freezing. In Florida, that rarely happens. So, you want to have your antifreeze tested to make sure it's good for cold weather. If anybody's ever changed and didn't put enough antifreeze or was just running water, you want to make sure you got 50% antifreeze and 50% water. And any mechanic, or if you want to buy a cheap little gauge in an auto parts store, you can see how much you got inside it. Test it yourself. Other than that, not really. It's a little cooler in Tennessee and a little bit less humid than it is in Florida. You really are not changing that much. It's not like you're moving to Alaska or something. In Florida, you're a little closer to sea level, but you don't really have to worry about anything. Like if you move to Denver and you're a mile up in the air. Oh, I'm says I got a leak from the front main seal. It was recently changed. Could it be from the harmonic balancer? Okay, it could be. If you did it or a mechanic, whoever did it, when you had, you got to take the harmonic balancer off to change the seal, right? You should inspect it and see is it smooth or is there a ridge? And if there was a ridge in it, you should have got another harmonic balancer. Now, from my experience, it's either that or you got a crappy seal. Now, I've seen that many times. Guys will buy a cheap seal at a discount auto parts store. It's made in China and it wasn't designed right. Always buy, you're going to buy a seal, buy OEM. You say, what kind of car you had, but I would just go and buy a dealer one. Seals aren't that expensive. So what if their seal's 25 and the other one's 10? You're not saving that much money. You're taking an engine apart. Get the OEM seal because they will fit right. A lot of this aftermarket stuff, yeah, it's not going to fit right. PMF says, how are electric vehicles going to be able to charge the cars when thieves are cutting the charging cables for the copper? They're targeting the charging stations. Yeah, I saw that. Well, there isn't enough charging stations anyway. The other thing is that a lot of people don't think about is those charging stations need more maintenance than a gas pump does, right? I mean, I was 14. I was working at my father's corner technical station in Lewiston, New York for all those years, right? You know what we did to those pumps? Practically nothing. They just sat there humming away at their simple devices. You stick the big gas nozzle into your gas tank. Pretty simple, right? Well, the electric ones are a little bit trickier. They got to have cooling built into them so they don't overheat. They got to stay clean because if you know anything about electricity, if you got a dirty connection, that increases the resistance which builds up heat can start a fire. You could keep plugging it in and start to charge it, turn itself off because a lot of them have safety devices. So, keep plugging it. It won't work. It won't work. It won't work. You got to make sure those connectors stay clean and dry. Nobody's talking about that crap. <laughs> it's a me. Who's going to maintain these things if they ever actually build a whole bunch of them? Hardly anybody. That's what people don't comprehend. And then the thieves see, oh, money, 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 copper cables, psh, psh, steal them away. And once people find out that, they'll just keep stealing them. They won't stop stealing them. The big difference between having a gas station where there's human beings there and having something just sitting there is everybody knows nobody's out there when there's nothing there. And yeah, they can have cameras, big deal. Guy come with a mask on and cut it off, right? You got a gas station with people there. It's a big deal of difference between that and having some automated station where there's no human beings. And they don't seem to comprehend that at all. Like I say, this that crap isn't going to happen for long in the future, if ever. Who's going to put the money into the infrastructure? Where's the electricity that charges them going to come from? Nobody's building power stations. There's so many problems with that crap that, you know, make your head spin. Been. I do think though electric cars will be accepted much faster getting smaller cars and just charging them at home using them to go back and forth to the grocery store and crap like that. I know guy's got one in Boston. He works in Portsmouth. It might take an hour and 10 minutes to get there. He can go back and forth recharge it at home at night and he's happy with it. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah big electric cars. No. No, that's another story. 1996 says, I'm looking for either a new Miata or a new Corvette. What do you want to spend and what kind of gas mods you want to get? Okay, the Miata will probably get four to five times as much gas mods as the Corvette, right? That's just a fact. They've sold the heck out of them and they are fun to drive. But then again, they're a little miles to Miata. They're not race cars. The Corvette is a screaming monster. Let's say you're a turtle. You're going to drive like a turtle. Hey, get the Miata. You're wasting your money getting all that horsepower in a Corvette. You're not going to look macho in that Miata, but you're going to look macho a Corvette. So, what do you want to spend? What do you want to get? Uh, realize the insurance for the Corvette will be a ton more than Miata because it's a sports car with a ton of horsepower. Look at all the figures and then decide what you want to get. If you want to talk about long term, which is going to last the longest, have the least repairs, the Miata would be the one you'd buy anyway. So, if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.